Hello YouTube, I'm the Phone Witch and welcome to my first video of 2023. And for this first video, it's actually going to show my favourite build of last year and that is Stormbreaker. Before we get into it, if you could hit that subscribe button and follow my channel, that would be incredible. Otherwise, let's start the videos of 2023 and let's do this. So first, I'm going to start with the handle and I'm going to cut out six pieces that will all wrap together to form the circular handle branch. This is the only part of the build that I actually used a template for. I don't know where I got this template from. I've had it on my computer so long that I just genuinely can't remember. And here are the pieces once they're cut out. So now I just need to stick them together using my favorite glue, contact adhesive. So I add contact adhesive to all sides and then just stick them together one by one. Also, just to make this part a bit more sturdy, I use hot glue on the inside seams just to give it a bit more strength. Once these pieces were all stuck together, it's time to make it look a bit more natural and branch-like. In order to do this, I start by taking my Dremel and I sand down the seam lines. Once that's done, it makes it look a bit less square and more natural. Now real wood has veins in it, I could make a joke right now but I won't. So I'm just scoring in some lines with my craft knife to replicate this. Then I use my heat gun to heat up these lines. They expand, open up and leave the detail in the foam. I wanted to go a little bit further with the detail of the wood grain. So I just took my Dremel, sanded the lines that I'd scored in just to make them a bit deeper and wider. And this is how it looks once I'd finished that. And I was super happy with this wood grain effect. Now it's on to the axe part of the Stormbreaker, so I just drew some templates myself of what I thought it should look like and then I cut these out. These parts I cut out twice just to mirror both sides of the Stormbreaker axe head. Then these pieces all got stuck together. Then both sides of the blades need sticking together and I use some kind of what I call dart shapes with a beveled edge to do this. Placing one on the top and one on the bottom. And that was the basic shape of the blade complete. Now I need to glue down the front of the blade, but this needs to have a very thin edge like a natural blade would. So to make this edge really thin, I take my Dremel and I carve off a lot of the material on the inside of the blade shape. And this allows the two pieces to be stuck together flat to give that thin blade edge. I then just take some fine grit sandpaper, give this a sand, which makes it nice and smooth. Because this blade is hollow, I want to fill this with some foam to give it some sturdiness to stop it from collapsing. Which is what you can see here. It's messy, but it works. Speaking of messy, this is how my desk gets when I work. I just live for the chaos. Now it's onto the back of the axe head. All of the pieces I cut out for this had a beveled edge so that when they were all stuck together, it formed a square shape. And in the middle of either side, I used this dart shape just to give it a bit more detail. Then at the back, I cut out four beveled edge pieces that are stuck together to give it a little curve. Then I cut out a square piece to stick on the back to complete the body of the axe head. But if we're going to be correct, I guess it's an octagon because it has got eight sides. Much like the blade, this shape was hollow, so I packed it full of foam to give it strength. Then it was time to add that fancy little middle section that sticks the blade and the back piece together. For this, I cut out two larger square shapes and one smaller, and these would sandwich together to make that middle section. Before I stuck them on, all of the edges got rounded off with the Dremel. One of the larger squares got stuck to the back of the axe head, and then I stuck the little square in the middle of that. Before I stuck the blade onto the front, I just took my Dremel and rounded off all the edges to hide the seam lines. Then the last square section gets stuck to the front. Then the blade gets stuck right in the middle of that final square piece. And with that being stuck down, the top of the axe head is complete. In order to add the branch handle that I made before and make sure that it is sturdy, I'm gonna attach a wooden dowel to the top of the axe head. So all I'm doing here is I'm taking my Dremel and I'm drilling out as much of the foam material as I can in order for the wooden dowel to fit into the slot. You honestly wouldn't believe how many times I've had to stop myself from making jokes during this video. Hey everyone, take a look at my hole. This is kind of getting into OnlyFans territory. A platform that you will never, ever see me on. And now I just slide the wooden dowel into the hole, that's what she said, to make sure that it fits securely. Before I attach the branch handle, I add some more detail to the axe head. 
I do this by looking at the reference photos I had and just cutting some shapes out of 2mm foam that I think look good. I do this on the blade and the back of the axe head and it just adds that extra layer of detail that makes the whole thing look super cool. Now I cut out a circle that's going to go on the very back of the axe head, round off the edges with a dremel so it gives it a curved edge, and then I stick it on the back for the final cut out detail piece. To add even more detail, I draw on these random rune shape patterns that I'm going to score in with my craft knife, and then I go ahead and score any more detail lines that I'm going to heat up with the heat gun to give that final layer of detail. And when they are heated up with the heat gun, that's when the magic happens. And this is how it looks once all those details have been finished. Now it's time to stick the axe head to the wooden dowel. Here I'm just using some no nails adhesive that worked really well. I did have to let this set for a full 24 hours, but as you can see here, that axe head is going nowhere. Now that the axe head is complete, I'm going to paint this first before I stick the vines over it because it's going to be too difficult to paint once those vines are on. So I start by sealing the foam with my two favourite sealers from Polyprops, Black Hexflex and Seal Prime. If you want to know the full method I use, click the pop-up link here that will take you to the video of how I seal my props. Then I coat the full axe head in silver airbrush paints. This is a flat colour at the moment, but I'll do a lot more work to add more detail. But first I attach the branch handle over the foam dowel, pack it with a load of stuff to make it strong, and then add the final base at the bottom. This then just needs some detail, so I use the same scoring and dremel method that I used before to add some veins. Then I went back and finished the painting on the axe head, which I'm so sorry I completely forgot to record, but here's the finished paint job. Now because I don't want the paint to get ruined when I add the vines and paint the branch, I wrap this whole thing in cling film and masking tape to protect the paint. To add the vines that the Stormbreaker has, I actually use these reptile vines for reptile cages and they work so well. I just wrap the vines around how I want them, cut them to shape and glue them in place with hot glue. And this is what it looks like once they've been stuck on. I'd never be able to make anything that looked like this out of foam, so these are perfect. To make these blend into the handle a bit more and make them look like they're growing out of the branch, I used some foam clay just to hide them and to blend them into the base. This got left to set for 24 hours and then it was ready to move on to the painting. Again, the foam got sealed with Hexflex and Seal Prime. Then I started the painting with a light brown airbrush paint base. Over the top of this, I used a darker mahogany colour which made it look like this. And then to make it really look like wood texture, I used a black wash in the crevices just to add that extra depth. And with the painting finished, Stormbreaker was complete. Like I said at the start of the video, this was my favourite build of 2022. I was 100% happy with it, which never happens because I always hate everything I make. If you are still here watching this video, I want to give you a huge thank you. If you've enjoyed this video, if you could give it a thumbs up like, that would be incredible. If you could possibly share this video so it gets seen by more people, that would be absolutely awesome. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, if you could hit that subscribe button, it would mean the world. If you would like to further support the channel, I do have a coffee page set up for donations, but nothing is ever expected. So that's the first video of 2023 done. All I've got left to say is, I'll see you next time.